what we got on the bench today is a Husqvarna 455. Customer says he's having some throttle problems and that not long ago he had accidentally broke the throttle lockout lever. He don't know if that's tied to it. So we're gonna get in there, I'm gonna show you how to access that trigger and that throttle lockout. So this would apply regardless of what we have to replace. You'll have enough knowledge from this video to understand simple procedure of changing out the throttle trigger or the lockout lever or spring assemblies inside of a Husqvarna 455 Rancher. Meet me over at the bench. Now, as you can see here, this part is gone. Spring looks kind of twisted up. So let's take it apart and see what we're looking at. To take this apart, we're gonna remove these three screws. So once you get your three screws out, you should be able to pick up on that handle and slide it out. It's a little tight. Sometimes helps if we remove the cover off of the unit. Maybe now it'll lift off. And you may have to work it. It's a little tight in there. So this is what you're looking at. This is your throttle rod. You can see it runs up to your carb. So all you're doing, this throttle lockout when it's installed right, this piece comes up and catches under here that keeps, keeps you from pushing it. When you engage the throttle lockout, you move it out of the way and allows you to pull the handle, which in turn works this rod by just pressing on it. So for the sake of this video, I'm gonna take this broken piece out just so I can show you here. See how that works? So next we're gonna go ahead and remove this. I don't believe the problem here is related to the trigger. I think the throttle lockout spring is binding. So we'll remove that out. It just rests on that little post right here. And as you can see, that is twisted and contorted. So we're gonna replace that with some new a new spring. We're gonna reuse the old trigger, but we're also gonna put in a new throttle lockout. You can see that's distorted. I don't know if somebody's tried to repair it or not. Let's compare it to a new spring. So this is our new spring. As you can see, comparing it with the old spring is not as contorted up. What you wanna do is let this arm slide in through this groove. And this will rest down into the belly. You just simply slide it in Just like that. Get it from another angle for you. So when you're done, what you should be looking at is something to the effect of that. Then you're gonna slide it back on that peg. Being careful not to break that peg. Make sure this is up inside of the handle. Just like that. Now we got our new throttle lockout lever, which is this part. And what's left of the old one. Now that we've got our throttle trigger in, we're gonna put our lockout in. I'm gonna show you this twice from two different angles. What I do is take the lockout lever itself that makes contact here, bring it in behind, just like that. At the same time, Encapsulate the top of that spring, bring it over and slide it down on this pin. Now underneath is this lockout tab. You wanna lift it up a little bit and bring it under cause it catches under here to keep it from popping out. Let's do that again from another angle. We'll do it from an overhead angle. Once again, we're gonna drop this part through here and encapsulate this part in here while we make sure that this catches under here. So here we go. And then slide it back on our pin here. And bring it under. 
that's the finished part of what you're looking at. Then we'll put our side cover back on, put it, set it down, and we just drop our screws back in and tighten everything down. So now we've tightened all that down, let's stand it up and give it a good check, make sure nothing's hanging. Make sure that that throttle doesn't mash when this lockout is up. That's the whole purpose. And ours don't, so we're good. Then mash your throttle. You want to mash it fast and slow if you're checking for hang-ups and make sure there's no hang-ups. I like to also mash my lockout, squeeze my trigger, release my lockout, release my trigger. Do that several times and make sure that it releases and catches where it's supposed to. If not, it, you may need to replace your trigger also. There may be some wear on that contact point. So that's pretty much what we got. Really, really simple task. Uh, with the right tools, that job should take you no more than five minutes. Five minutes tops. Thank you all for joining me.